So welcome. Um, happy anniversary. <laughs> if we're, we're celebrating, um, you know, all the, the things that we don't want to be thinking about, but uh, yeah, we were just talking. It's amazing that how resilient we are as human beings and adaptable in a short time that we've been um, able to, to shift gears and continue uh, really affirm this practice um, that we can do it together, um, collective energy in our separate safe little quarters. And, and so we're, we're, all, uh, we're all learning new things. So some gratitude for all of that this morning. And this is a restorative class. So we're moving slow. Uh, we are interchanging between some stretching, some movement, some warming up and some longer held postures to support um, restoring the nervous system and building up our ability to, uh, to have a strong immune system. So it's a good class to have a few things with you. And if you don't have any of these things, that's fine. We'll figure it out. This morning, I'm going to suggest a starting pose that brings in a couple of pillows and a, a blanket, or there maybe you may figure it out in a different way. I also like to have a band or a strap or a bathrobe belt that's near the mat. So things are around that you can grab. Uh, Walls and furniture are not a problem. Sometimes opening up a, a body part onto a, a chair or a couch ends up being a nice support. So I've taken my blanket and I've just rolled it up a couple of times. It's in a, a long flat sort of tube. You could use two pillows instead, but I'll just show you. So I'm lying it down in length lengthwise on my mat so that it'll encourage a little bit of softening in the thoracic spine. And I'm also gonna use a couple of pillows or a bolster if you have one, one big pillow to come underneath the upper part of the thighs. So when I lie down, so I'm sliding this uh, support a baby bolster, shall we call it, so that it's going to catch between my shoulder blades. And also my head will be on it. And then the pillows down by the hips or knees are so the soles of the feet can come together just gently. And then the, there's some support underneath the upper thighs there. If you've got a, any pins or a ponytail holder in your hair, you might want to remove that. And then if you have uh, another way to do this, you might use two pillows, one for the head and one for the back of the heart instead. It doesn't matter. What's important is to be taking the time to set yourself up so that you'll be able to land here with some ease. And no effort. And we'll begin the practice. The sound of the bell as an invitation to arrive. Stepping out of all of the attachment to um, the mental landscape, the thoughts and the stories and dropping into the body. <laughs> Setting that habit only takes a, a few moments to Notice that there are distractions or just other objects and events that are calling for our attention, which is normal. And giving ourselves permission here 
to feel whatever is here on the emotional landscape. Could be some uncertainty, some doubt, some anger, some stewing about a situation or some planning for things that are yet to come. There could be some, some ease, some joy. Maybe some tiredness. We're slowing down so that we can allow, invite and give permission for all of that to be just as it is. It's here anyways. Aware of the feeling of pressure, of the weight of the body, just a, a dropping into gravity. And scanning the body from the soles of the feet where they may be touching if your feet are together. All the way up through the shins, the knees, just seeing what might be here, any tension or any soreness, the upper thighs, in around the attachment point at the hips to the pelvis, feeling the weight of the back of the pelvis and the sacral bones there, allowing this view of sensations in the body to be all that there is right now, traveling upwards along the spine to feel where body parts are meeting the ground or the support that is there behind the heart. Aware of spaces as well, especially if you're able to use these props, there might be some breeze blowing underneath the back neck. The weight of the head. Traveling up and over the top of the skull and down across the tip of the nose, just resting for a few moments here in the oval of the face. For me, this is a place that will often hold a lot of tension around the jaw, the eyes or the area between the brows. Traveling with the awareness across the throat, upper chest, belly, ribs, some gratitude for the organs of digestion that are operating reasonably efficiently for us to be well enough to be here today without having to Press any buttons to make things happen. Allowing the attention to come to the hands and rubbing them together. And so get some good solid vibration, movement and energy crossing across the palms. And then rest the hands somewhere around the head, face or forehead, allowing for transfer of some of that energy, both between the, the brain and the facial muscles, maybe feeling what is so heavy here, just draining or moving into the hands so they can be comforting, any brain knots, some gratitude for all of the activities of the brain that are really life-sustaining communication with the spine and rub the palms together once again. 
Rest the palms of the, the heart somewhere over the chest with the elbows relaxed and soft on the floor. So again, there's no effort and feeling the movement of the, the lungs in this area, opening and closing, breathing in through the back of the heart and breathing out into the hands. A deep breath in through the nose, in through the back body, in through the soil. And exhale into the hands. One more time, breathing in through the back body. Exhaling it out into the hands and rubbing the palms together again, just to take all of that and dissolve it, rub it away. Moving the hands down to feel the abdomen and the internal organs there. The lower lungs, taking three deep breaths in this area. And maybe you close up the mouth now. If you have a cold or any other reason why you don't care to breathe in and out through the nose, then just comfortable breathing. One more time, let's rub the palms together. And then turn the palms just to face upwards and the arms outstretched again at the sides and let the attention just rest in the sensations of temperature and tingling or vibration through the palms, through this area of the body that is so important for all of those small movements and activities that we do throughout the day with the fingers, with the palms, lifting, tapping. And then let's take a big stretch out, reach the arms beyond the head above you. And if your knees have been open, can stretch the legs out long. Take a hold of the elbows just above the head. Catching opposite elbows there and hugging the elbows in a little bit closer towards the head and at the same time energetically pulling them apart as you bring the legs together and just point the toes. And then flex through the heels and point the toes and flex through the heels. One more time, point breathing in and flex there and draw the belly in and just feel everything tighten and engage, stretch the arms one more time, just so the palms are facing each other and maybe make fists here. So you feel all of that contraction, all of the muscles just at your simplest thought, communicating that from the brain down into the body to be strong and hold it here for one more inhale. Open mouth, exhale, let it all go. Let's just roll to one side to take, if you had supports underneath the head and shoulders, move those out of the way. Pillows or anything down by the lower back could go to the side as well. Let's have the feet wide now and bring the knees into touch and move the arms into a cactus shape. We'll drop the knees over towards the left on the exhale. Just hang out here for a few moments, reaching the right knee away and coming to the edges of your feet. So your right hip will be lifted, but the leg bones can just be heavy. Nodding the chin over towards the right side and just looking down in that direction. The eyes can be open or closed, but there's nothing in particular to have to look at or see. Let the Focus, come to whatever might be going on in that right hip, right side of the lungs. If it feels a little too intense, just move the legs a closer together. So we're not trying to get to any destination or any max stretch here. The intensity is here just in holding these poses for a bit of time. Let's take three 
Breath cycles here, exhaling for one, two, and three. Bring the knees back up to center and then take them over towards the right. You can toggle the legs around a little bit, adjust your shoulders, tuck the tailbone so that it's wrapping towards the bottom of your mat. And then just take it to the edges of your feet, big toe edge of the left foot, baby toe edge of the right foot. Start to nod the chin over towards the left. You might adjust your head. Of course, you can put a, a, some support underneath your head if the head feels like it's falling back. And then let the weight of the arms, the weight of the legs, just go here, settle into some Heaviness through the lower abdomen, even though the left hip is lifted. And we'll take three breath cycles on this side. Exhaling for one, two, and three. We'll bring the knees back to center. Try not to get caught up in my counting or anything. It doesn't have to coordinate with your breath. Let's hug the knees in towards the chest now. So it's just a frame of reference and then bring the knees away a little bit, inhale. And then hug the thighs in, exhale. And release the knees away, inhale. One more time, exhale. Take the knees away from each other. You can support your thighs or your knees with your hands and then bring them back. And then hug in and open. So we're doing these big circles out to the side, outside the ribs, and then hugging the knees back into center, feeling the uh, upper thigh bones stirring in the hip socket and then change direction, guiding with the hands. And then let the knees move away and still wide, let the heels just be heavy and loose. You can shake them a little bit rocking over to right elbow. Be using just a little bit of momentum, swinging tailbone through center and then over towards the left elbow. Weight of the tailbone drops through center, right elbow. And you're rocking across your entire back. Continuing to just let the heels, try to let the weight of the heels and the feet, the bones there be heavy. And then back to center, keep the knees a little on the wider side. And we'll see to stretch the legs out. So kind of a V shape. You might pull the inner thighs or the outer thighs, some, something to support under there and circle out the ankles. Might catch a couple of popping or crack sounds there, point and flex the toes. Notice if your tailbone is lifting up and try to allow it to heavy a little more, you can keep some, some core containment. Maybe feel uh, the inner thighs for a bit of a massage. You might feel some ropiness there, just gently moving that out towards the knees and take another breath. If it's too much with the legs straight, the knees can always just stay bent. Let's hug the knees in again and right into center this time. Tucking the chin towards the chest and holding underneath the thighs or on tops of the shins and curl yourself up into a tight little bow and exhale there. And then inhale, lay back down. Let's do a bit of movement with the breath together. So bring the fingers down towards the heels. Feet a comfortable distance apart and heels pretty close to your seat. Rocking through the lower pelvis for a few rounds of just pelvic tilting. Tailbone to the floor on the inhale and then exhale. Lower back drops. Tailbone to the floor, breathing in. And then exhaling peeling the belly back towards the floor. Rocking through that, the knees are pretty quiet. This is just the hips. Inhale forward and exhale. The tailbone is peeling up, but it's not 
your hips are not lifting. Let's do two more of those. Breathing in and breathing out. Good, just come to a neutral pelvis now and let's take the arms and reach them up and then back any amount. Take a breath in there. You'll feel a little bit of space under the low back and then exhale, lower the arms back beside the hips. Just the arms are gonna lift on the inhale, feeling anchored through the tailbone. And then arms are lowering on the exhale. Let's do three more slowly as if this movement is new to us, feeling the arm bones moving in the shoulder sockets. Two more. Going at your own pace and breath. Last one. And the hands down beside the hips. And then let's do the hips and the arms at the same time now. So the inhale presses the feet, lifts the hips and the arms, bringing some weight into the shoulders. And then the exhale lowers everything back down. Just simple, straight, lifting on the inhale, feeling the space at the top of the inhale and pause for a moment. And exhale to lower down. Lifting on the inhale. And exhale to ripple it all back down. You can roll the spine or you can just do straight lifts or try both ways. No right or wrong. Whatever feels interesting and feels good. One more time, let's inhale and pause there. And then exhale, lower. Bring the right knee in towards the chest. Left foot can stay on the floor or you can stretch that leg out. And we're just gonna swish the right thigh bone across the uh, belly or the ascending colon there a few times. And you can, you can be loose in this. You might be rocking the hips side to side. That feels good. And take that knee open to the side and just kind of hold it out there. So it's, it's a bit of a can opener shape. And now keep the left hip just heavy on the ground. You can have your left hand resting there to see if that's true. Or reach the left arm beyond your head again or out to the side, lengthening. If you've got your left leg straight, just press out through the heel so that activates the leg and heavy the left shoulder down. And take two breaths here. It's one. And two, bring your right knee back towards center and take your left hand to your outer right thigh. You're not gonna come all the way over. We'll take the um, weight of the left hand on the right outer thigh and just guide that leg over a little bit. I'm gonna take my right thumb in the right hip crease and sort of press it down and away towards the, the floor or towards the bottom right corner of the mat so you get a good uh, sense of lengthening along the IT band on that side. One more breath. And exhale. Might be good to have a, a pillow or whatever it is you use for some height. Now over on the left side and go back to the same position of the left hand against the right thigh and this time come all the way over. So land on something if you have. Even if it's a piece of furniture, something you can connect with. Resting your shin or your thigh. And then reaching the right arm could be low down by the hip or extended open to the side. That bottom leg could be bent as well, or if this feels like a lot for the back, you can place the pillow between both knees. And there's so many different ways that you can support your practice here this morning.
try it all on so that you can come for about a minute on this side. And if your neck is agreeable to look out over the right shoulder, if your right shoulder is lifted up, that might not be the best. You can just look to the ceiling or even look to the left. And so once you get into the shape, see if you can settle there without too much fidgeting. I'll ring the bell to start this, us into this posture and, and also again to bring us out of it. So the intention here is to be open, to find some friendliness to what might be arising in terms of sensations that are presenting themselves, that are coming and going. The way that the breath is in this shape. And the undulating intensity of what might be present in the, the hip or the lungs, wherever it is for you. Or the circus of, of thoughts and being hooked into a future event or ruminations about the past. Boredom and patience, whatever it is, a desire to abandon <laughs> what's here. It can be helpful to anchor the attention on a single object, which might be the breath for some, it might be the field of hearing. And that's a saw, there's no gripping with that. So the fact that thoughts keep uh, calling attention is just mindfulness, just noticing that and starting over. In the moment, you'll hear the sound of the bell. And just allow that sound to reverberate for however long it does in your awareness. And slowly start to exit the pose, take it onto the back. Let's give the right leg a shake towards the ceiling. Just jiggle things off there. We'll cross the right ankle above the left knee now. Level out the hips, press your hands into your thighs just so you can feel that space coming in the hip flexor psoas. And taking a few breaths there or threading the needle, you can bring your thigh in and wrap your hands or that might be a lot to expect the arms to be that long or for whatever's in your back, you can use the strap instead around the left thigh, just give it a pull. Just making sure that the right knee is not experiencing any, any pain or any real sensations at all. You may rock a little bit. Does one side bring on more? Let's take another full breath cycle wherever you're at. And then release and exhale. Let's cross the right knee over the left knee now. So it's more like you're sitting in a chair and draw the thighs in towards the chest. 
The heels can stay heavy. The hands might clasp around the thighs. Or you can tuck the chin and come up, hold the thighs or grab the shins. And then move the feet apart as you come back down. So make sure your head does come down to rest on the floor or something. You might still have heels heavy to the seat or heels can kind of pull apart from each other and toes draw towards the face. Try to stay with weightiness through the tailbone. So it's reaching long for one more inhale. And exhale, lower. Uncrossing the legs. Let's slide the legs long and take a full body stretch out there. Lengthen. Breathing in. Make fists again. Draw the toes towards the face. Tighten. Tighten the muscles of the face as well. So just squeeze everything to center. And exhale, let it go. Good, let's have the knees come in again if you feel like a rock. Or you can windshield wiper the legs before we do the second side. Having the props around, maybe start with the pillow over on the right side if you're going to uh, have that there. And then knees are both bent. Let's do a couple more roll ups through the spine. So the low back presses down and then the hips lift. Breathing in. We're just doing the hips now and then exhale, lower it all back down. Two more times, just the hips are lifting, peeling the spine up, inhale. And exhale, undulating down. Once more, just the hips floating up. And knees reach forward to lower down. Let's add the arms to lift up, inhale. And exhale, lower. Two more times, arms and hips floating. Wave-like movements with the breath, remembering that we're practicing together. Inhaling. And exhale, bring it down. Let's hug the left knee in and give that a squeeze. So your right leg might stay bent or you can stretch the right leg long. Swishing this left thigh bone across the abdomen. Just moving that out in a way, supporting with the hand. And you can let your hips roll a little bit side to side. These could be circular movements. Just seeing what's there, what's offering on this side. Let's take the can opener shape. So supporting that knee falling out. I have my left elbow on the floor and just kind of holding the leg up. So it's, it's dangling there. The heel is dangling in. Can opener shape. The right arm might reach beyond your space as well if the right leg is straight and feel that right side of the body heavy down. Let's take three breaths here. No rush. Impatience can be here. The desire to get on with things can be here, just giving it permission to move in and out. And let's come back to center. And so with the right hand, guide the left knee over to the right a little bit. We're gonna stay there. So it's just a small angle, the left thumb and the left hip crease and you almost like you're kneading the, uh, the flesh or the dough on the outside of that leg lengthening back and down through the hip and long through the knee. Your left hip is lifted, but not too much. One more breath. And come on back, exhale. 
So this is where we would be liking to have the prop beside the right hip. So shifting the hips a little left and coming to rest the left shin on a support. The bottom leg could, could bend or both knees could bend as well. If that's better, pillow between the knees. Take a few moments. It's got a few pops, back cracks going on here. Adjust your head so you might rock it side to side. Decide on the position of your left arm. Should it be down by the hip? Or would it feel nice to stretch it out to the side? Or is there pain in that shoulder? Maybe something underneath there or just uh, finding a way so it feels therapeutic. And then we'll settle in as we did on the first side for some time here at the sound of the bell. Let the awareness rest in the entirety of the body in this shape. Something to come back to when the activity of the mind is compelling. Completely natural that some of those doubts, uncertainties, or whatever that worry or thing is, of course it's going to be loud and clear. It's fine. Gently harnessing our way back to body or to breath or maybe to sound. Just for now. Just for this one breath or even the half breath. Embodied energy, practicing being with what is rather than doing. A few more breaths on this side. The moment you'll hear the sound of the bell. Making your way to the back. Give the left leg a shake in the air. Jiggle and wiggle and fling some sticky things out into the universe. Breathing in. And exhale, release. Then level the hips for a moment before we take the figure four on this side. The left ankle will cross above the right knee. Thighs can press away some support from the hands, and this might be it right here. Or thread the needle if that's of interest. Hands, or as we did on the first side, maybe the strap is better. Lengthening through the tailbone and making adjustments for what's on this side. Maybe rocking. Protecting the knee, the ankle, left foot is flexed if that's an issue. One more breath. And exhaling there. Start to, in a more relaxed way, just cross the left knee over the right knee. Squeeze your inner thighs together a little bit. Feel the center line of your body. Hug the thighs in. You can just stay here or Support the thighs with your hands. If you can reach or the strap. 
or tuck the chin in, come up and grab the shins. Pull them apart a little bit as you come back down. The heels can heavy or the feet can get active as well and draw the toes towards the face. If you're doing that, just again, tailbone is, is long on the mat. Try not to feel a curve in that lumbar spine for one more breath. And release, exhale, uncross the legs. Let's take one more big stretch out to lengthen the front of the hips. Exhale, release. Let's do one more thing here before we come up with uh, the pillow or the blanket, fold it up a couple of times, lift your hips and slide it underneath so it's a, it's not as high as a supported bridge by any means, but there's a bit of a boost for the seat. And then stretch the right leg long and stretch the left leg long. Maybe the arms are at the sides. Or if you're okay for the back, then take the arms and we'll take opposite elbows again. We did that once before, so you might aim for what feels a little bit different in terms of the cross of the elbows. Let your legs, your feet just flop away from each other so nothing's holding here. And if it uh, feels like a lot with both legs out, then you can do one leg at a time or just keep the knees bent. All in an effort to soften and open the front body and come out of our winter hibernation protection and keeping warm frame of mind. Just open to feeling it all. One more breath. Exhale to release the arms, walk the feet to bent. If they were straight, lift the hips just to take the support out. Knee squeeze. Let's roll it over to one side and pause. And then take it over to press the top hand to come up. Let's come to the hands and knees now. Give yourself Support if needed underneath the knees. Take the arms forward, keep the seat lifted and take a little bow, exhale. And then lift the heart and then take another bow, exhale. So the seat is staying high and extended child's pose. Inhale there, coming forward and then exhale, settle. Let your forearms rest to the floor. Forehead might come down towards the floor or it can just hover there as well. <clears throat> if you're comfortable with your forearms and elbows on the floor and your forehead is down, then let your hands come to meet behind the head. Take the elbows a little further forward. So you're feeling a stretch underneath the tricep, under the arm, and we'll take three breaths there. One, two, belly draws back towards the spine for three, and exhaling. Let's curl the toes under, walk the hands back, and press back towards the feet, stretching out between the toes and underneath the feet, and also coming up on the fingertips so you get the Flexion in the spine, just let the head be heavy there. One more breath. Shift forward. Come to the tops of the ankles and sit yourself back in towards a child's pose. Just to stretch out the ankles or you can sit right up there to get a little bit more and circle the shoulders out a couple times. 
And if you'd like to um, sit in a chair, if you prefer that, you can. If you have some height with your bolster or pillows, then we're going to come to sit, work a little more into the shoulders, strap if you have shoulders and neck. So just take any comfortable position. I've got quite a bit of height underneath my seat. So the spine is, is long. Let's shrug the shoulders to the ears and breathe in. And exhale, let it go. In. Ah. You're fogging up a mirror on the exhale, pale. Ah. Take the right ear over to the right shoulder and then bring the right hand alongside the head. Press your left palm away, pressing out through the fingertips, feeling that stretch along that side of the neck, arm wrist. One more breath on that side. Let the either left fingertips come to the thigh or the floor or bend the elbow and rest the back of the left hand at the lower back. Move the right hand around to the back of the skull and just guide your chin down, press the head back into the hands. Just making some small movements here, lifting and lowering the chin. Let's release the right hand and start to look out over the right shoulder. Taking a couple breaths, looking over on that side. And then start to line up the right ear to the right shoulder again. And bringing the right fingertips down and reaching the left arm straight up. Take it into side stretch, exhale. And lift up, inhale. Let your left hand rest behind the back of the skull as you take that side stretch again. And then come back up, start to wrap the right ribs around towards the ceiling, support the back of your head with your hand. And then take the left elbow, scoop the belly into a cat shape and take the left elbow just in the direction loosely of the somewhere along the right thigh. Open that elbow to the ceiling, inhale. So the ribs are revolving and then exhale, scoop and hollow the belly. Once more, breathing in and exhale. And then come back through center. Let's just release that. Let's take both arms and look up, inhale. And exhale, reach the arms away as you look down. Reach up, inhale, and exhale, look down. One more time, reach it up. Exhale, bring the hands behind the back of the skull and squeeze the elbows away from each other. Leaning back a little bit with the, uh, the upper back, but staying contained in the core. And then squeeze elbows towards the ears and chin towards the chest for three. Two, and one, release the arms. If you're sitting cross-legged, just change that up so the other leg comes in front or give yourself a shake out. Let's go to the other side. So left ear to left shoulder. Just kind of line it up there, making some uh, non-judgmental notes about side A, side B. Press the right palm away. Just to feel the sensations along those tiny venal muscles all alongside the right neck. You can move the jaw around a little bit here, opening and closing, and keep active through the right arm. And then we'll either rest the right hand on the thigh or fingertips on floor, seat, or take the elbow bended on that right arm and rest the back of the right hand somewhere at the, the lower back. I'm taking a breath here. And then start to 
Nod the chin down towards the chest and over towards the left, just looking out over the left shoulder. Nod the chin back down and make some small movements on this side. Let's reach the right arm straight up now. Come back to center. And then bring that hand around behind the head. Support the head and lift up there. Take the left fingers out to the side. Actually, let's just reach straight up first. And take in the side stretch. Exhale. And bring it back up. Inhale. Exhale the side stretch. And then if it's available, let that hand come behind the head. Open the elbow and the chest towards the ceiling a little bit, and then exhale, take the right elbow towards the left thigh. Scoop the belly in a cat, and then open on the inhale. And then scoop it out, exhale. One more time, open it up. And exhale, scoop it out. Inhale, come back up. Reach it up and exhale, come back to center. Both arms reach up, inhale. Exhale, reach away, looking down. Look up, stretch the eyes, breathing in and exhale. Keep the height of the spine. One more time, breathing in. Hold the back of the skull, move the elbows away. And then elbows squeeze together and head drops. Pressing a little back into the hands. Good, release the arms and we'll take the strap over top of the right shoulder. It's our last thing here, bringing the strap over the right shoulder, reaching both arms up again. And bringing the right hand down to touch that strap and holding the right elbow with the left hand. Just work here if you like, or take the left arm open. Have that bend again as it comes around. And then you can hook on to your shirt or if you have the strap there. If you can hook your hands together, good for you. I don't have any prizes today, but I certainly can. Reach the elbows away from each other for three breaths, pressing the head back into the hands and keeping the strength of the core for a neutral pelvis. This one. Two and three, release the arms and just do a few conductor style movements, nice and loose. <sighs> Let it go. Slowly release the arms for a moment, pause, breathing in through the nose and out through the nose. Let's shift the strap over to the left side now. Reaching both arms up, breathing in, and then just the left hand down to see if the strap is there or just rest your hand at the neck. Take a hold of the left elbow and hug it in a little bit. Wrap the tricep in. Notice if there's an arch coming in the low back and then knit the ribs down towards the hips. Stay here or reach the right arm away. Palms facing back and bend the elbow to Work yourself into what's here on this side. Hands might be closer or further away on the second side. An arch might come in the low back, that's okay. Once you get yourself into position, then drop the tailbone down again and reach the elbows away from each other for three. Moving the head back into the hand for two. And one, let go. And then once again, just to swoop it out. Good, shake everything off. A little bit of guitar hands. A few circles of the wrists. And have a look at the hands and figure eight with the thumbs, the pointers. It's connecting again with the hands as we're wrapping up here. Figure eight loop through all the fingers. Squeeze fists really tight. And release. Let's exhale and squeeze, make fists. Just let your elbows be heavy at your sides. One more time. Release and then squeeze fists. 
And then just flick some raindrops. Shake it again and coming down to our final posture of rest. I'm gonna suggest an inversion. And so if you have a chair or the side of a bed or couch that you um, wanna elevate your legs up on, it's good if whatever it is can come right underneath your knees. Or if you have a, a block or pillow that as we did before to lift the seat and rest your hips on and then you might float one leg or both legs up and the knees can be really loose and bent. And if you don't feel like that, and then just, uh, just be in a posture of ease on your back as we enter into our final few minutes of complete rest and digest. At the sound of the bell, we'll have a couple of minutes of just, just silence. find it hard to be present. Welcome to the club. Just making note of thinking, planning, and patience. You can rest your sound for the next, or your awareness for the next minute, next and final minute, just on the sense of hearing. Let that be your your anchor when the meanderings of the mind are there. In a moment, you'll hear the sound of the bell and see if you can just be with the vibration, the sound until you're not anymore. If your legs are elevated, you can start to bring them back to ground. Be aware of the space that you're in. Just open the eyes, blink them open so that you can take in the landscape. Doing a few movements here to come back to more alertness. A shake, a windshield wiper, or a stretch of the jaw, maybe a yawn. And then take the rescue pose on one side with the knees bent, making a pillow with your arm or putting something under your head. And use your top hand to press up to take a seat to close the practice. Leaving some things behind. Gratitude for these bodies, for all the 
and where places they've taken us. Gratitude for each other, for our group, effort and intentions of, of well wishes. Dedicating the merits of our practice to in some way inform our, our activities for the rest of the day and to ripple out like the uh, pebble dropping into water to all beings everywhere. May all beings be safe, happy, and at ease. Namaste. Thanks, ladies.